When Calvary was first built, they expected single-family houses to go up here, but instead apartment buildings were built, and more graduate students and African Americans moved into South Madison, and Calvary struggled to minister to those new communities. Well, longtime viewers in Madison may recognize a familiar face. That is former News 3 reporter Nancy Johnson, who worked with us here in Madison in the late 90s. Now Nancy can add published <laughs> author to her long list of journalistic credentials. Nancy's debut novel is called The Kindest Lie. It's a timely commentary on social justice, race relations, and what it means to be black in today's America. Nancy joins us from her home in downtown Chicago. Great to see you again. Welcome. Hi, Nancy. So good Hi. to see you. It's good to see you guys. Oh, my God. I can't believe you pulled a clip of me <laughs> from the vault from the 90s, well, really. It's oh, the, your big hair days. Yeah, the big yeah, hair days. Big hair days. <laughs> so you left Madison to take another job in television, right? Right, right. I left. I remember when I left Madison and you guys put together this whole thing for me, uh, showing me on the beach <laughs> because I moved to Florida to West Palm Beach to the ABC affiliate and I reported there for a number of years before moving on to the CBS affiliate in Tampa Bay. And then I left the business to go into corporate communications and now I'm working as an author. So tell us a little bit about the book. Congratulations, by the way. How, how long a, a journey was this for you? It took me about six years to write the book, but I wasn't writing constantly, you know, so I may go a few months, you know, without six years and the story is the kindest lie it's a story of family sacrifice and love all of it at the dawn of the obama era and the book centers on a woman named ruth tuttle who's a successful ivy league educated black engineer in chicago but she's been keeping a big secret and the secret is that she gave birth to a baby when she was just a teenager and left him behind in the dying indiana factory town where she grew up so she goes back there to search for him and when she gets there she forms an unlikely friendship with a young white boy who is poor. He's nicknamed Midnight, and the two of them are on this collision course of race and class, and both of their lives are changed forever. What do you hope the reader gets out of this? I really hope that readers think about um, issues of race and class. You know, last year we went through all of the um, racial violence that we saw with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery, and a lot of white people started reading uh, anti-racism uh, nonfiction. But my hope is that through the characters in The Kindest Lie that people will start thinking about race in new ways and thinking about the, what divides us and also thinking about, you know, what they can do in terms of bringing uh, the communities together because I think there's a power in fiction and in novels like The Kindest Lie to build empathy and to help us walk in the shoes of someone whose experiences are very different from our own. This is a non-fiction story. Uh, excuse me, it's a, a fiction it's story. It's a fiction story. Right, yeah. it's, a, it's a fiction book, not a non-fiction book. What was, right. how did the idea come about? What was your inspiration for it? Yeah, the inspiration for me was the um, presidential election in 2008 with Barack Obama. So many people were filled with this palpable hope uh, because they felt that we had transcended a barrier putting a black man in the White House, and we certainly had done that. And that was certainly um, progress that we could celebrate. But at the same time, I kept hearing from people that we were now entering a post-racial era because we had a black president. And I knew that was not the case. All I had to do was look at my social media feed to see how divided we were along racial lines. And then throughout Obama's presidency, you know, we had Trayvon Martin's killing and we had the Charleston, South Carolina shooting and so many incidents that show you how far we still have to go as a country when it comes to race. And I wrote it, you know, in the second term of Obama. And then you look at where we are today and the parallels are just so striking when you think about uh, the economic um, strain of the Great Recession in 2008. And now during the pandemic, we're also feeling um, the financial strain of that. And I think when you're feeling that kind of economic anxiety, it just exacerbates the racial tensions. And that was something I wanted to explore. It's still a long, a long way to go. Great reviews for this book. Your editor's choice at Amazon. Congratulations. Yeah, that's Thank a big you. deal. We're proud of you, Nancy. Oh. And it's so great to see you. That's it's wonderful to see you, too. It's great to be back with you all again. All right. Best of luck. Great to see you again. We'll have you on when your next book comes out. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, for Come sure. up to Madison and we <laughs> can right. all be together again. Yes. Good to see you, Nancy. Thank you. Good to see you guys. Thanks. Still to come.